what is up? We are live, finally. So, fun story. Microsoft hates me. Windows <laughs> is not my friend. I'm using a handheld mic with an old whatever. It doesn't matter. We're going to have Heslip Tech Talk today. I'm here uh, joined by my brothers, Joshua and Jeremy. Jeremy, do you want to introduce yourself to the crowd of yeah, tech Yeah, Jeremy. Absolutely. Um, my uh, microphone and setup works, and uh, I'm from um, <laughs> uh, OmniTechPro.com and OmniTechPro channel on YouTube. I, we help um, companies do their technology right, and looking forward to some news today. Oh, yeah. Joshua, what you got for us? Yes, Josh Heslip, the middle wheel in the Heslip Tech Talk cog, and uh, I run joshua.net and also am primarily live at youtube.com slash joshua14 for all your gaming and tech reviews needs with the Surface Pro 4 and Surface Book. And uh, I'm sponsored by Microsoft. What? What up? <laughs> Guys, uh, the great thing about this is, great thing about this is that I'm just going to get Frizzy Fresh up in here holding the mic mm -hmm. and uh, just get crazy in here. But starting us out right, guys, there was a cell phone that might have just happened to launch yesterday. I don't know if you guys have heard about it. It's a little company. It's a startup called Samsung. And uh, they dropped the Galaxy S8 and the S8 Plus yesterday. I won't actually drop my mic. Oh, whoa, we went, we went crazy there for a second. I won't actually drop my mic because uh, that'd be bad. But we got... Uh, Some good stuff happening here. Mind if I get down here for a second? Yep. Yep. I don't know what's happening. It might just be this mic cable's not great. Uh, but, uh, so I'll show you some, some stuff we have here. The Galaxy S8, it's got some great stuff going for it. Um, first off that I saw that was pretty sweet um, was the fact that they now have the uh, Bluetooth 5.0 on this guy. I mean, that's pretty boss. Yeah, one of the first phones. Um, yeah. This is the first first smartphone here with with the Bluetooth 5.0, and some of the things that that's going to do is it says that it will be uh, four times the range and eight times the broadcast message capacity of this. Uh, so this is going to be awesome. You're going to have a better quality audio. It's going to be uh, faster connecting. The range will four times as far. So I mean, typically before you got what 30 uh, 30 feet or so. So, man, if you can get uh, some crazy with that, I, I, that'd be awesome. Up to like 120 or so. Um, yeah, tape the mic as a lapel. Just tape it here. You're here. supposed to be able to also have two phones or two headsets connected at the same time. Yeah, so that's that's part of that capacity in that um, of the broadcast that adds. So, yeah, if you say you're on an airplane, instead of needing a splitter, you guys can both have Bluetooth headsets hooked up to the Galaxy S8. I think that's pretty sweet. I don't know why they didn't have that earlier. I guess it was just the limitations of technology, but um, pretty cool to see there and uh, all kinds of good stuff. So uh, Samsung's just been killing it with, with all this here. They have uh, a question they asked, though, is like, do you guys think that the Note line is still going to be necessary? Is this still going to be something that people are going to want? Or, um, I mean, yeah. This will be interesting. Productivity is is different on this, but with it being a 5.8 inch screen and a 6.2 inch screen on the regular and the plus, it's a good question if whether or not the Note will see. What I think the Note really is for Samsung is them to kind of push the boundaries of what they do on the regular devices. And each Note line has kind of been like something that they push what they're doing further and further. Uh, kind of testing some boundaries like they did the Note Edge that, you know, that was their first Edge display. Um, you know, with the with the different Notes, they tried different design languages. So uh, I think they'll still keep it, but it'd be interesting to see if people really want it at this point. Uh, the Galaxy 8 uh, SA Plus is still about the same footprint as a, uh, a 7 Plus. Uh, it's just like a slightly taller, but it's actually narrower and just as thin. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see kind of what they do with that. Uh, what do you guys thought on the Note line here? What, what's going to happen with that? I, having the Note 7 for, you know, about um, three weeks or so, 
<laughs> was super jazzed about it. Super, I really like it a lot. Liked it a lot. And so I think that it's still desirable from people like being able to grab your pen out and be able to, you know, I, I love the tactile feel of having a pen in my hand, writing on a surface, and that helps me remember what I'm writing down, you know, taking notes, stuff like that uh, really works well. Um, so I'm definitely going to be disappointed if they don't come out with a note line for the S8 or the Note 8 or whatever they want to call it. So note 7.5. <laughs> so uh, with that, it said Microsoft is going to be selling its own Microsoft edition, which it literally only is is they have all of the Microsoft Bumble, yeah. apps preloaded onto it. So that'll be interesting. I mean, they tried something like this before with the Galaxy S6 and uh, having like a different version, but then Android, uh, Google Docs and things like that were having a kind of a battle for who could have what on the phone preloaded. And uh, they had some issues with royalties and dispute. And uh, But now there's going to be a Microsoft edition. And since they're pushing this uh, new thing called, you know, Samsung the DeX uh, desktop experience, uh, we'll see if that's something that's actually useful or, you know, Microsoft had their Windows mobile stuff that did have uh, dockable options, but this seems a little more streamlined. Um, but is this really going to be useful or do you think people are going to actually um, use this in the long run? What do you guys think about that? I, I mean, it seems really interesting, and but if you have an extra screen and you have an extra monitor, why are you going to be using your smartphone in the first place? That's my thought. Well, maybe you're a soccer mom and, uh, you know, you have a your kid has an extra monitor lying around. Yeah, it, it doesn't make sense for like, hey, just buy a screen and a keyboard and mouse and you're good, you know. Uh, maybe they're going to have a bundle set up like you don't even need a computer, mom. Sweet. Right. Um, so, yeah, they're going to have to shoehorn people into believing the Dex vision. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it'll be interesting to see because I, I don't think it's it's quite there yet. I mean, some of the things that they showed off that you could do is you can drag and drop a file into an email. Like what? that was their showing off of Dex and how good it was, um, and like how you know mind blowing it was. You're like, we've been doing that for years on desktops, and you know, like, and then you can ask Bix Bixby something too, you know? I mean, yeah, and that's another weird thing. It <laughs> was was Bixby, and like they even have there's a hardware button on the side for Bixby. Did you guys know that on the left side under the yes. volume rocker, there's a Bixby button, and MKBHD was like. I will pay someone lots of money that can figure out how to remap that button to Google Assistant. Google Assistant, <laughs> yep. Yeah, so we'll see if that's like any any a winner. I mean, S Voice was a kind of a debacle. It was it was bad. Like I disabled that immediately on my Samsung phone. Not good at all. Um, and it would try to overtake Google now all the time. Like it would redefault back to S Voice when you didn't want it to. Um, so that was that was frustrating. So we'll see. Uh, from from what it shows in the uh, things so far, it looks really good. Like it looks like everything that Google Assistant can do, but some extra content aware things. And they were pushing that like anything you can do with your hands, you should be able to do with your voice. I was like, that's a pretty bold statement there. Like if anything on your phone. So we'll see. Um, you know, I'm not. I'm not sure if that's going to be the case coming here forward, but they're going to be pushing it, and if, if they can do it, they can do it. Another thing that was really interesting with the SA to me is, hey, that 18.9 aspect ratio is here. It's actually 18.59. 18.5, yeah. On, on the S8, so that 18.9 on the LG G6 was like, whoa, this is crazy. And then yeah, Galaxy S8 was like, hey, we'll do the 18.5. So that same 2.1... <laughs> You know, larger, thinner um, ratio is is really interesting to me, and it's all about that one-handed usability. Uh, it makes it taller, and from what it looks like, the worst part though is that the sensor on the back is just a terrible placement on the top, 
because even in in their videos, they had guy two, uses two hands, two yeah. hands in order. Yeah, to, I'm a KPHD. I was saying yeah. that. Uh, one thing that William was saying um, here when we were talking about it was uh, William is one of my. Uh, partners in crime. Um, he uh, he was saying that the longer aspect ratio might be better for the Samsung VR headsets. So to have that little bit of 0.5 in there so that you have the extra uh, resolution real estate to, to make it a better experience for putting up to your face versus the wider ones. So yeah, I thought they, that was a good point. They really pushed, they really pushed their uh, new VR um, actual cameras and then the different headsets and stuff like that so they even had ostriches wearing vr headsets so you know it's the future <laughs> if ostriches wear it so did, did anybody see the um uh the silicon valley season the new season trailer yet no <laughs> no i didn't uh, apparently there's some vr stuff going on there but um Gilfoyle, the one like really nerdy kind of russian hacker kind of guy uh he he and he was saying rad after he Use the VR headset, just like the uh, the uh, the other guy that was there, and they were wearing the same pajamas. Like, <laughs> it's like VR changed his life. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Have to watch. Jeremy, it. you got some uh, security PSAs here coming around. What do you got with some? Internet service providers doing some sketchy stuff here. Yeah, so unless you're living under a rock, you probably heard from somewhere on some site about something happening with some Congress people doing <laughs> something with your browser sharing history. Well, I'm here to say that you should be scared. Um, this is, I mean, if you're Google or Facebook, if you're using any of those things, they're doing it already to you. So, um, your, your browsing history and where you're going on the internet is already being used by advertisers. So this nice, uh, our nice representative from California, Nancy Pelosi, is like saying they can know where you are. They know, uh, you know your search history. They know your health and financial data. Well, they do know all that stuff, but they can only sell it in aggregate or else they are breaking um, you know, some FCC rulings about um, privacy laws. So it's kind of, uh, to me, it's a non-starter. That being said, um, how do you how would you protect yourself from something like that? So first off, they recommend getting a VPN, and I, I currently use a VPN called um, VPN Unlimited. And for thirty or thirty nine dollars, you can get a lifetime subscription to VPN Unlimited from Stack Social, um, which I think is a pretty good deal. That works on iOS, Android, Windows, Mac, um, etc. Um, so that's a pretty good VPN product. There's tons of VPN products out there. But the bad thing with VPN products is a lot of time they leak out your DNS, which is what they're really using to say where you've been. So if you're going to Google.com or Facebook.com, that gets on your Comcast or Verizon DSL or Fios or whatever, and they know that you're going there. Um, well, to, to that, you can use something called DNS Crypt. And it's free for Windows, Mac, Unix, Android, iOS. iOS, you have to use jailbreak. But everywhere else, it's fine. And um, all of your all your DNS traffic, so when you're going to Google, looking up the Google addresses, goes through an encrypted, encrypted channel. And uh, the Comcasts of the world and the um, um, you know ISPs of the world can't sniff your um, to browsing history or traffic or know where you are, that type of thing. So if you use a VPN and use DNS crypt, you'll be fine. But truthfully, you know, uh, to me, it's kind of like, well, that's great, but they've been able to really do that anyway. So <laughs> it's just now so, they're legally allowed to do it. <laughs> so just don't visit any websites, don't use any apps, and don't go anywhere right. with your phone, and you'll be fine. Jeremy, do you want to explain right. to well, the last a tech literate what a VPN is just thrown around terms. Sure, yeah. So it stands for uh, virtual private network and it basically makes a connection between your device and a third party. So like VPN Unlimited has like uh, servers in Virginia or Dallas or San Francisco and um, it, it basically sends all your internet traffic from you to VPN Unlimited and then it, it, you go out to the internet from VPN Unlimited. So, com so those websites and stuff won't know that you're living where you're living at your um, IP location. And it's not necessarily anonymous. It's not necessarily um, uh, makes you be 100% private because Facebook still kind of knows where you are and other websites know where you are. But your ISP won't know where you are or at the hotspot or at the coffee house. Um, they won't be able to uh, sniff your traffic or 
potentially know what's going on with your browsing. So those are pretty good ways of uh, being protecting yourself in public uh, access points or just in general. That will uh, go well into what we're talking about later with Facebook, but. Uh, but moving right yep. along, uh, Josh, what type of uh, Raspberry Pi uh, workings do you have for us today? Right. So this is called the Matrox Voice. It's basically a little circuit board that you add to your Raspberry Pi and turn it into an Amazon Echo. Ooh. So it's super interesting. So basically, uh, it's the company's called Matrix Labs. Um, and it's called the Matrix Creator. And it has um, seven microphones and some LEDs, so a uh, ring of LED lights. It's $55 on Indiegogo. Um, and uh, this is from TheVerge.com, so it's pretty, pretty nifty. So uh, it also has a microcontroller with Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth is 65 bucks. So... So Which what's the, the what's the advantage of doing this over than doing an Echo Dot and hooking it up to a speaker? Um, I mean, basically, it's more DIY. DIY. Um, so and, and you the can, fun of it. Yeah, you can use you can use it to make other things too. You don't have to use it to make a you know Alexa clone. So uh, so yeah, because I mean, you'll have microphones. You'll have so you could. Just make it to say, okay, Google, what? Make your own Google Home. <laughs> I so, to make my sandwiches in the morning. Right? Or you could use it for Cortana, right? I mean, I'm sure you could do whatever you want. <laughs> only, Bixby. Uh, <clears throat> only Bixby. Only Bix. The Bixby. Or you could integrate it with um, your uh, um, Eleanor Bixby. The Zelda flute. So it's not going to ship till May. So if you wanted to just go out and order one of these online, you can't do it. So. All this the stuff ocarina. Makes me want to make a Zelda ocarina. Did you see that guy who did that? I haven't seen that. This guy, he automated his entire room, his entire house, to be automated through uh, ocarina. So he played certain notes, and the recognition of Alexa realizes what he did. Um, so he played the Song of Storms. And it would water his plants. He played um, it's Song of Time. It did certain things, set alarms. It was crazy. He, he did certain things for the whole house. And then he had one just to reset everything back to default. So yeah. it's pretty interesting. Um, not first today. Will, you're slipping. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> Welcome, though. Um, yeah, we'll move it right along. Um, so uh, speaking of Facebook kind of taking over, they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff lately. I don't know about you guys if you've noticed this, but they have been adding, like quietly adding features to uh, their platform over and over again. Like they added this little rocket symbol, which is kind of like a um, Twitter's like popular, uh, the lightning tab. So it's just going to add things that you're not subscribed to, things that, aren't following but they think are news and noteworthy so they can be added to your feed so it's a second feed and it's going to be things like that then they they added facebook uh stories which are just uh you know um a snapchat rip off here too so they're just they're switching it up they added uh more than that they added a um, facebook town hall that you can find your local delegates and like your governors and things like that for politics and be able to message them and, uh, you know, connect with your, your political activision. So it's really interesting. They've been pumping out crazy amount of, uh, updates here recently, pretty quietly. Um, and adding Snapchat filters, adding things. I love how Zuckerberg tried to buy Snapchat and they said no. And then he just stole everything that copies Facebook everything <laughs> exactly and, uh, and makes it on his own. So, It'll be interesting. I don't know if, um, but it, it, they're trying to kind of take over everything. What do you guys think about all these extra added things to it? Are you using any of them? Um, I mean, the the stories pop up at the top of your feed. So occasionally, if I see a friend that has a story, I'll just you know click on the circle and 
what the heck are you doing? Like we had a bunch of uh, flooding, flash flooding, and they had a filter where it had a bunch of rain and it was in his middle of his living room. So, you know, it's kind of stupid, but uh, fun at the same time. So it's got its place. It's just more social interaction stuff and more uh, features that hopefully will flesh out the, uh, I mean, keep people on Facebook. This is what their whole whole point is, is that, hey, you don't have to go somewhere else to uh, to make this happen. It'll be people yes. that didn't didn't use Snapchat that are now going to use this. Yeah, I was just going to say Snapchat for old people because I I did a career day for the local um, ninth graders at the different schools, um, Bennett, Mardella, um, etc., Salisbury School, and um, I asked them after every period, you know, what mobile apps are using on their device, and nine out of ten were using Snapchat. You know, the occasional Instagram person, but I was like, so Snap Facebook's pretty much old, and they're like. Yeah, we don't use Facebook anything. <laughs> so, you know, these are ninth graders, people coming from middle school to ninth grade, you know, this year. And all of them, not about all of them are using um, Snapchat or WhatsApp. Or, and it's um, pretty crazy how much their snap streaks matter to them. Uh, there was someone that was going on like yep. a, uh, a soccer retreat that they were going to a, a soccer camp for the week. And they gave their phone to like their somebody little, else their little brothers or friends they just take like snaps every day yep to snap their friends to keep their snap streak to lives like yep. that's how that's how much they are invested into this app. It's my pokey streak yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you gotta, gotta get your snap streaks i think i've had snap streaks like twice in my life uh if that, <laughs> yeah. like, uh, two day once, two once day snap streak yeah, maybe. Yeah. so that's just making sure you do a snap every day yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and then there's different icons, and it'll go from like a happy face to with classes, and then it'll be a fire whenever it's like yeah. a long time. And you'll get trophies and things. Yeah, and so it'll it's basically adding more like achievements, In incentive. Yeah. yeah. Gamification of pictures. So <laughs> I mean, that's basically it. Yeah. So. Well, cool. Um. Well. Jeremy, what do you got for uh, some Tesla updates coming at us here? Excite. So, Elon Musk has been uh, crazy over the t over the um, Twitters recently, and um, yeah. So, I mean, a couple cool things that have been clarified, and just kind of as a um, PSA to everybody, uh, a little bit Tesla obsessed. So, I uh, I love me some some Elon Musk and some things going on there, but. Um, some of the some of the people talking, they're saying that the the Model Three dashboard won't be as futuristic as we hoped, and I think that goes with a little little caveat to say what Musk was saying, what some other things were saying is that the actual dashboard, like right in front of you, that normally does like the speedometer and stuff on most um, cars, will not have like necessarily the speed. It'll all be in the middle console. Now they had an example. The middle console was a huge, like. 17-inch monitor in in landscape um, mode, and I think everything will be in minimal things like maybe uh, you know a parking light or something like that um, behind the steering wheel. So he's like, yeah, none of that stuff's going to be there because all that's going to be automated. Autopilot is on, and all these other things that you know um, uh, you won't have to care about the speed because it's driving you there, kind of thing. So that that's kind of cool. They're they release some of that stuff. Um, some of the other things that they were talking about were um, the um, what were they saying? Heads up display would still be cool to have that on. on the yeah, I think I think they're going to have to do something like that. But um, you know, uh, it, it'll be interesting to see what they have up their sleeve for sure. So I'm excited. You know, having having a car that's uh, less than 100, 100 grand will be <laughs> will be will be nice when it comes out, and hopefully they sell as many as they need to 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 keep profitable with that coming out in 2018. Yeah, as long as they don't keep pushing that back. That's for sure. Yep. Yeah. Well, it doesn't help that their their fearless leader says, "I'm not driving one. I'm still using my Model S." <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, and they, they did say that that the Model S is going to be more of the luxury vehicle, whereas the the three is going to be more of the more affordable. It'll still be yeah, it'll be it'll have a lot of technology, but it's not going to be your um, you know your Lexus style um, type vehicle. Yeah. It's going to be more like you know your Honda, your luxury, Camry, if you will, 
camera exactly. to your Lexus, exactly. a cord so. to your Acura, <laughs> and it won't have as big of a battery, so it'll it'll have a lot it'll have less range, you know, two hundred some miles instead of three hundred some with the Model S. Um, you know, it's going to be a little bit smaller, so it won't have the ability to have you know seven people even if they're in the trunk, in the, you know. Um, um, type thing, but you know, for for everybody else that you know isn't a rich uh, billionaire, um, you know, Tesla owner of, of Tesla, you know, I think it'll be good. <laughs> nice. That's great. Well, well, Josh, you got some uh, updates from AMD cards. Well, what do we got happening here with them? Yes. So this is from WCCF Tech, and uh, they've got some pictures of the rebrands for the RX 480 and 470, I believe it is basically how it's rolling down. So it's going to be the 580 and 570. Um, so they're going to have higher clock speeds and they're going to have a slightly different uh, memory bandwidth apparently. And um, so they're supposed to have an eight pin connector instead of a six pin connector, which uh, some people were, saying on their traditional 480s we're having some uh issues with power power draw um so hopefully this will help out and the look at that heat sink man it's huge <laughs> it's huge <laughs> so uh so yeah but basically uh, if you look here on this uh chart here the 480 has 2304 cores and 1266 megahertz clock well it's the same cores but it's 1340 megahertz clock uh the same memory bandwidth and same clock speed but on the 470 to 570 uh it's faster clocked memory and faster clocked speed so a little bit of variation here uh curious to see how the prices are um doled out uh, but it's they're coming next month so and they're saying the Vegas GPUs, which are based on the HBM2 uh, instead of the DDR5, like these guys, are going to be coming in late Q2. So you're going to have to wait uh, a while. But uh, just interesting. So hopefully these will, you know, give uh, NVIDIA more of a bang for their run for the money uh, as far as like the the lines of more competition is always good. So, um, but uh, but yeah, so very yeah, hopefully I'm I'm looking into getting another graphics card, but we'll see what happens. So, because I got to be more competitive to like a 1070, right? Um, no. Or like uh, the, six gig. the 1060, it's still going to be. I I think it's it may be in between the 1060 and 1070 as far as okay. um because the 10 480 overclocks that were like right on online with 1060 overclocks. Yeah, yeah. So the 480 is and 1060 were were par for par. So this isn't going to make the 1070. You know, I don't think it's going to even, you know, bat bat an eye. So uh, people who want the 1070 or or want the best bang for your buck for 4K, whereas the 10 the 480 is 1080 Ultra with 1440 decent performance. So, um, yep, that's basically about that. Speaking of uh, more adding more P's to your your limit here, uh, Twitch now is supporting 1080 60p, which I thought they already did. I was surprised when I read this, huh. and that they now support it um, because I thought for sure we already had 1080 60 because I've been doing YouTube gaming, which already has that. And, yeah, you uh, think? And so this was kind of a surprise for me. So I guess Twitch is just doing a a uh, catch up here. And it's interesting. So kind of a sidebar wasn't that big of a news, but I was just really surprised that Twitch is kind of behind on on resolution here and uh, the support for it. They said they had 1080p for a while for some streamers, but probably ones that are partners and that have more viewers uh, yeah. that I would have support for anyway. But I normally do 720-60 anyway, but um, cool to see that they have it. It's added um, and kind of nice, but... Jeremy, uh, one of the last articles we have to round out here is something that's ooh, a little exciting, uh, a new phone that could uh, shake things up in the Android market here. What do we got? Yeah, so we should all be excited when Eric Schmidt from uh, you know, ex-Google Alphabet 
fame, um, gets excited about something. And this is um, one of the co-owners of, um, of Android leaked this picture on Twitter. So it's basically just somebody holding a phone that you can't really see in their hand. But you can see that there's very little bezel going on there. And it's rumored that um, the uh, co-creator, Andy Rubin of Android, is working, his, he has a company called Essential, is working on a new smartphone. And it's supposedly going to be one big screen. So no buttons, and obviously then power button or maybe uh, volume rockers or something like that. Um, but, you know, kind of kind of uh, Galaxy S8-esque as far as, um, you know, full, full screen. But, yeah, at the top here, I mean, it's all the way up. There's no chin. There's, or at least there's no forehead on this one, um, but no chin potentially as well. And it's gotten some people um, excited about it. And, you know, it kind of makes me excited about the possibility of having an all, all glass uh, front um, with no buttons and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll see how, what they come out with in the next uh, couple months type thing. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, definitely we'll be doing follow-ups as stuff happens. Yeah. Spring is in the air, Reese's Cups. <laughs> <laughs> This episode is sponsored by Reese's Cups. And um, Food Lion. Will this phone eat the middle out of the Reese's Cup? That's the question. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. When you see Andy Rubin, one of the co-creators of Android, and his yeah. vision for what an Android phone should be, that's pretty exciting. Yep. Because if, he, if you're going to be able to get a no-fuss, like, all-screen user experience, and you got to think that it's going to be, like, really crisp Android, maybe just, like, a small overlay of things that he might think would be better. Um, exactly. And then, you know, some of those options. So maybe it's like the, the, the Xiaomi Mi Mix that has just that little chin on the bottom but no bezels around the top or sides. Uh, that'd be awesome. Because they yeah. got to do something with, with the camera and the sensors. So it would either be on the bottom or maybe they don't have a front-facing camera. Maybe they just say – Forget you, selfie takers, and just do all the screen <laughs> on the front. Who knows? But they also have some of the ambient light sensors on the front there too. So you got to have a little bit of a either chin or forehead for some of the sensors, unless they figured out a new way to do it. Who knows? Maybe. I mean, I did see some stuff come across. Um, you know, iPhone eight leak type things that were talking about new technologies out there of having um, sensors underneath the uh, digitizer and LCD. So, um, you know, having those uh, proximity sensors or light dark sensors. So, so maybe they found out a way of making the camera, um, you know, when the camera app comes up, that part just goes black, a little circle around where the actual camera is. So no light leaks into the camera lens and it shows through the LCD. I mean, it's clear. It's, it's basically just showing, uh, um, you know, where the light is. So it's possible. We'll have yeah. to see. Either way, it, it's exciting a, news anyway. A, a fun, exciting thing. I mean, that was like the teasiest of teas is that you barely see yeah. the screen. Uh, All you saw is a little bit of those bezels, but yeah, a little uh, corner. That's that's gonna shake some things up, and then you know when when others are excited about it, pushing it, then uh, that's fun. So who knows when that'll come out? But hopefully, we'll get some more information maybe over the summer or see a little later. Uh, in the Eric fall. Schmidt said it's coming very soon, so you don't you're not gonna have to wait. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very Eric soon. Smith knows. Straight from Eric. That's exciting, but that's cool, guys. Yeah. Any other thoughts or things that are that are coming out here for you guys? I'm just playing Mass Effect right now on my ultra wide, just loving life. So uh, it's fun. Mucho fun, huh? nice. uh, Minecraft 1.12 is coming out soon. <laughs> 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 my awesome. casual gaming going on oh yes i might be streaming at some point today if if i don't break my system from anger of the uh microphones not working <laughs> frustrated incorporated yeah i don't know how you're gonna do overwatch without your your task rig so that'll be i know because I'll, I'll have to just hold it and play like this well, if you did up, if you did updates, just go through your Windows update list and um, roll back any things that look like they mess with the sound card. Yeah, for people that are just in, in I updated Windows and it 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 pooped on my Taskam drivers on my uh, system here, and it's not letting my normal microphone and setup work. So I had to plug in an old one, an old setup. So this is working, but we had to start quite a bit late. But bug bug twat. 
bug a task cam on Twitter, like their official task cam, be like, hey, you ruined my live stream. <laughs> need reparations here. <laughs> task them US, baby. Yep. Right. Slap them right, around. Guys, well, this has been fun. Glad to, that we were still able to get it working and going here. Be sure to check out Joshua 14 and Omnitech Pro's channels in the description below. Lots of fun stuff coming out from everybody here. Uh, I'm excited to hang out with you guys and have some fun this week. It has been fun talking some tech with a handheld microphone so I can do some of this action coming at you. I'm not going to drop the beatbox, but I could because I got it. All right. Thanks, guys. It has been fun. Thank you so much for watching. And, you know, as you...